In this lecture, we're going to talk about relations and functions. We use the terminology of relation and functions in our daily life, and the mathematical meaning is very similar to how we use it in our daily life. A uh, relation is a connection uh, between two or more quantities. For example, if we think of students in your classroom and their height in inches, there are many ways in which we can display the connection between the students and their heights. One is in data form, or table form, or as ordered pairs, or pictorially. We'll take the first two right now. So if you write the name of the students in the classroom and the height in inches, your data could look something like this. Or you can choose to write them in ordered pairs. So here's our set of all our data points. So Robert, 72 in parentheses means that Robert's the name of the student. 72 is the height of that student. And we collect all such students. Notice how we have two students named Sarah. One of them is 61 inches. One of them is 65 inches. So as you saw, two people could have different names and different heights, or different names and same height. Or two people could have the same name but different heights. Or two could have the same name and the same height. So the name of the person in this relation is called the input, while the height of that person is called the output. Well-behaved relations where each input gives a unique output are called functions. So for example, remember how Sarah, there were two Sarahs in our classroom, same name but with different um, heights, that would not be a function because you have the same name giving you two different outputs. So a well-behaved relation where each input gives a unique output is called a function. So a function is a relation where every individual input has a unique output. So consider the relation where a person x is the input and that person's sister is the output. This relation is not a function as there are multiple outputs for any person x with more than one sister. So if you have a person with two sisters, then both those sisters would be the output, making it not a function. Another way to express a relation is by writing it uh, by equating two variables. For example, if I write y equals 3x plus 1. Here, x is the input, and y is the output. For every individual x, you multiply by 3, add a 1, produces a unique output. So y equals 3x plus 1. y is considered a function of x. x is the independent variable, and y is called the dependent variable. In order to distinguish between two different functions, like say y equals 3x plus 1 and y equals x minus 5, we need a different notation so we don't confuse the output from this function with the output from that function. So the notation that mathematicians use is what you see right here. You read this. It's very, very important that you learn how to read this correctly. It's f of x f of x equals 3x plus 1. Not f times x, f of x equals 3x plus 1. And g of x is x minus 5. The f is the name of the function, and the variable input x is called the input or the argument. f of x, in this case 3x plus 1, refers to the output. So you can think of this as x, y coordinates in the rectangular plane. Or you can think of f of x as the y coordinate, and x is the x coordinate. The collection of all the input values of a function is called the domain of that function. The collection of all the output values of a function is called the range of that function. To understand the notation, f of x equals 3x plus 1, picture this. It's like you have a machine that has a particular task. When something goes in, its task is to take that thing, multiply by 3, and add a 1. So 
anytime you're evaluating functions, just take the x value and put blanks in their places. And whatever question they're asking you to compute, you would replace x with that. So if I want f of x, then I replace the blank with x. If I want the blank t, so now I want f of t, then all the x's will get replaced with t's. If I want f of a plus h, then all the x's that you see here are going to get replaced with a plus h. So take a look. It's a plus h is taking the place of x. So you put a parenthesis here. So let's just do that again. When you put f of a plus h, you're going to have 3 times a plus h plus 1. Try computing f of your name. So for example, you'll say f of Shubhangi. That's my name. So f of Shubhangi would be what? It would be 3 times Shubhangi plus 1. See if you can do that with your own name. So if you put in this, what would happen? Why don't you pause the video and tell me what the output will be? Go ahead. Assuming you've paused and come back, you just replace the x with 1 over 7 square root a minus 1. So it doesn't really matter what is here. Whatever is here is going to go take place of x. Just remember that. So if f of x is a function that represents biological mother of x, here all human beings form the domain of the function, and all moms form the range of the function. You note this is a function since every person has a unique biological mother. Also note that several siblings can have the same biological mother. It is OK to have many inputs giving you the same output. You just cannot have one input giving you multiple outputs for it to be a function. Just remember that. So let's say s of c equals social security of c. So all US citizens or legal aliens in the United States will form the domain, and all the social security numbers would form the range. You can also use whole words for the name of a function and not just letters like f, g, h, and so on. You can use small letters, capital letters. So pretty much there is quite a lot of leeway in what you use for the name of the function. So for example, if I say find the Celsius 104, so what does that mean? Here I am taking Fahrenheit temperatures and converting them to Celsius. So 104 degrees Fahrenheit is how many Celsius? You just replace the temperature with 104. So a solution would be what? Replace this temperature here with 104. So 5 ninths, 104 minus 32, and then you finish computing it. So that would be 40 degrees centigrade. Uh, I picked this because I wanted to tell you how I am from Pune, India, and in Pune, a lot of times in summer, you have 45 degrees centigrade temperature. 40 degrees temperature is pretty common. But 40 degrees what? 40 degrees Celsius. So temperature in Pune is measured in Celsius, whereas the United States is measured in Fahrenheit. So you get some sense of how hot it gets. Let's introduce you to absolute value of a number. For any real number, the absolute value of that number, which is denoted by two vertical bars with a number between, is the distance of that number from 0 on a number line. So for example, negative 2 is 2 units away from 0, whereas 2 is also 2 units away from 0. So both negative 2 and 2 have the output of 2. All right, so we're going to ask you to evaluate the following. If we define the absolute value function as absolute of t equals absolute value of that number, then evaluate absolute value of negative 3.1, absolute value of 0, absolute value of negative 100, absolute value of 100, absolute value of a plus h. So. Pause the video and try it on your own. 
All right, if you've come back from pausing the video, let's see what you got. So absolute value of negative 3.1 is absolute value negative 3.1. That's 3.1 units away from zero, so that will be the answer. So see if you got all of them right. Now, what about this one? Absolute value A plus H is going to be absolute value A plus H. Since we do not know what A and H are, you're going to have to leave it as is.